Cam Redden, and this is your homecoming on 2 SSR FM. Well, this week, as I mentioned earlier in the show, is the week of International Women's Day. And as part of uh, acknowledging publicly some of the women that make our state the best in the country, the state government announced earlier this week the winners of the fifth annual Women of the Year Awards. Now, there were 331 nominations lodged and 13,000 people voted on many of the awards. One was chosen by a panel, and that was the Premier's Award for the Woman of the Year in New South Wales. Jen Armstrong from Grays Point left a violent marriage four years ago, and what she's done since is an inspiration that is worth telling the Shire, it is worth telling the state, it is worth telling the world. Three years ago, she started a charity called The Beauty Bank, which provides victims with essential toiletries, beauty products, and other essential items to victims of domestic violence. She's an inspiration. For many, she's a godsend. And I'm thrilled to say that she joins me on the line. Jen, it's great to have your company this afternoon. Hi, thanks for having me. It's great to have you on the show, Jen. And first of all, congratulations. I mean, how does that sound, being the 2016 Woman of the Year? It's still very, very surreal. I keep checking the award to see if it's actually my name or <laughs> it was a big mistake. <laughs> and tell me a little bit about the Beauty Bank. Just how did this all come about? Well, like you say, when I walked out um, of a very violent marriage, I was um, pregnant. I had an infant daughter as well. Um, and I left with um, almost nothing. So when I was trying to reset myself up again, um, I was more worried about sort of paying rent, keeping clothes on my children's back, paying for nappies and formula, all those type of things, rather than mm. going out and buying anything for myself, um, let alone sort of um, any sort of luxury items. Um, I was anonymously through um, Dandelion Support Network, which is a great local charity as well, I was given some things for my son when I had him and I also received a um, fancy body wash. Um, and it was just so lovely just to take, even just taking the five minutes to have a shower and enjoy that body wash. It really, it was just a really nice indication that the wider community and people who I didn't even know really cared and sort of validated my decision that I was making the right decision because, um, as you may know, domestic violence isn't just about physical violence. Mm. The majority of it is the long-term implications of psychological violence and you, your self-confidence is completely eroded. And I guess that's what makes the decision at the time all the, the harder because you don't think when you make that decision uh, to, to try and fix something, to try and make a change, you don't think about, oh, I need to go out and, and get toothpaste. Where am I going to get the food from? Those things all you have to deal with at once after the fact, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's a really, really hard decision to make um, and for the local community to be behind it and talk about domestic violence and speak out and that's why I speak about my experiences as hard as it is to sort of relive that part mm. of my life if it means one other victim hears this and decides they want to get out and they're going to be a survivor I just want them to know that they can it's hard it is so hard mm. that they can do it there's so many organizations out there that's willing to help them you mentioned that a lot of this started from that one act of kindness to you that was the $20 mm. bottle of body wash. What was it about mm. that gesture that really made you think, you know, I want to do something about this that really spurred you on? Um, it was just the fact that it was, you know, someone I didn't even know. Just it was the wow. reaffirmation that I was doing the right thing. And when I had my doubts or I was told by my ex I was an idiot and all the rest of it and... I needed to come back or I needed to, you know, sort of change my behaviour. It was just that reassurance that, no, hang on, I'm not going crazy. This is the right thing. And when your self-confidence is so low, sometimes you've got to start with the small stuff. Mm. You know, start with, you know, fake it to you, make it almost. You know, have with us, it's, we do makeup as well. We have accessories. It's just taking care of yourself and, you know, you might, take five minutes or ten minutes to paint your nails with a uh, nail polish that's in out one of our gift packs but just that time is time for you and if you're not looking after yourself and taking care of yourself and taking time out for yourself you'll burn out and I've done that in the past and then you're no good to the children you need to help or your own recovery in the long term and, and you didn't even know the person that, that gave you that bottle is that right no no wow. I don't did did you ever get to see them again? Did you did you get to meet them? I mean, what, no, what happened no. There? This was this was through a charity, right? So someone helped me. It was 
just sort of a one-off little thing that uh, that was thrown in with the gifts that were from from Dandelion Support Network, mm. and they just happened to have something there, and it came in. So wow. it was, yeah, anonymous gift. That's it wasn't like someone on the street who just gave it to me. It was an organised <laughs> charity um, that they just sort of did. They just happened to have something around. Um, but for us, it's full-size gift packs. They're not crisis packs. They're gift mm. packs for these women with the essentials as well as some luxury items as well. Over 3,000 people have already benefited from your work in the last couple of years. It must be really extraordinary to actually see that difference being made to people that were are in that situation because you've been there and you know just how important it is. Yeah, well, everything that goes out goes through the beauty bank, goes through social workers, so we don't have any one-on-one interaction with any of their clients. Right. Uh, we do get feedback, which is lovely to hear of people shedding tears when they realise that a handbag full of toiletries is for them. Hmm. Um and just for me, it's not, and for all the volunteers that work with the beauty bank, it's not about that gratification from someone saying thank you. It's just the knowledge that you, we get feedback that people are very happy and they're surprised by it. And it's just paying it forward. I mean, like I said before, if one person can turn their lives around and, you know, grow from a really horrific time in their life and, make a positive out of that like I have well then it's completely worth it that's great to take away have you got any advice to women that might be listening to this at home and and are thinking well maybe I have a story to tell I don't really know what to do what what would your piece of advice to them be you're not alone I know it's very very hard for you right now and you were doubting yourself I am most sick of domestic violence that's about you doubt your own self-confidence you are stronger than anybody in your household you are the best person to get yourself out of that situation it is very tough and you need to do it in a safe way but all the social services the police they've all changed so much even in the four years since I got out there's Mm. so much support there and you deserve better and I always live by the model, motto now, you will not define me, I will define me. And it is bloody hard, but it is so, so much better when you're out because you deserve so much better. <laughs> That's so well said, Jen. I couldn't agree more. Let's, let's look from here on. You're now the 2016 Woman of the Year for New South Wales. What's coming next for you? The next thing for, well, for me, when I say me, I mean the beauty bank, is... We need to secure a larger space, maybe a small warehouse. The Mm. space that we're in at the moment is tiny and the demand that we have for our packs is far exceeded by the space that we can um, facilitate it from. So um, if everyone sort of keeps their eyes out or if they have a spare warehouse or like a small warehouse or a shop front laying about, we'd love it. Mm. Um, (laughs) We're going to start a fundraising campaign um, and apply for some grants and everything to get more space so we can get more product in and we can start really making engaging more volunteers in the community because there's so many generous people out there. Um, if people want to help from home, go onto our our Facebook page or our website and um, contact us with some PDFs and we can send you some stuff so you can collect in your own office. I've also, I work at Cronulla Sharks as well. So now, I wasn't going to let you get weekend. away without mentioning this. <laughs> Derby Day on the weekend, the first of the year, round two. Uh, I was going yeah. to mention you are working as uh, the the stadium operations coordinator at the Sharks. Correct. How are things shaping up for the weekend? Big game ahead. It is looking great. The stadium is a hive of um, activity today. Yesterday will be tomorrow. So we're just making sure the stadium's beautiful, tidy. We've got new food offerings. So it's going to be really, really exciting and I'd encourage everyone to catch the trains or buses because parking will be crazy and get here at Gates at one thirty, so you can soak up the entire afternoon. That's right. The show is going to come to a halt on Sunday afternoon. Kickoffs at 4, I believe, so get around it. Jen yep. Armstrong, Woman of the Year for New South Wales, Woman of the Year for Cronulla as well. Uh, all the best to you, all the best to the Beauty Bank. You should be very proud of what you've done. Thank you so much for your time. How can you not be moved by listening to her story jen armstrong founder of the beauty bank new south wales woman of the year for 2016 
All those details uh, will be on the Facebook page, the website after the show. The Beauty Bank, if you want to get involved, which you should, if you can, facebook.com slash thebeautybankau, AU for Australia. And also you can check out the website, www.thebeautybank.org. This is worth getting behind. The The work that Jen has, has done from a horrible situation is just phenomenal. It is inspirational, is the only word that, that really sums it up. And as you heard her say there, um, they may have, have fought a lot of battles, won a lot of battles, but this is still going on. The, the latest research suggests that one in six women in New South Wales will at some point in their lives, over the age of 15, be in contact of some sort of domestic violence. That is a bloody awful statistic. And it's through the work of Jen and, and the people with her and people like her that fight to change that. We are, of course, expecting a new set of statistics. The ABS, uh, BOSCAR, I should say, the Bureau of Stats and Crime Research, are expecting to release a later, uh, an updated version of those domestic violence statistics coming in April. When they do, we'll have them for you. And as you heard Jen say there, they're starting a fundraiser. Uh, all that information will be on the Facebook page. They need to fund a warehouse to the, the demand way outweighs the supply. And that is, that is not a good state of affairs when you, you're trying to look at society as it is. But nevertheless, Jen Armstrong, New South Wales Woman of the Year, Cronulla Woman of the Year, what a story that is and what an inspiration she is. Cam Redden, and this is your homecoming on 2SSR FM.